Javed Akhtar, welcome to CNN News 18. Thank you. Javed, sir, you're really a hero, someone who fights for the well-being of, uh, of the music community against all the odds. I just want to tell everybody that in the in the year 2010, few producers put a ban on you because you de demanded royalty for the lyricists and music composers for their work. And you succeeded in your in your efforts when Parliament approved amendments to the Copyright Act in the year 2012. And now, according to Sizek Global Collection Report, IPRS is ranked four, as the fourth largest society by revenue in the Asia Pacific region. Your efforts are really paying off, sir. You're the chairman of uh, IPRS. You all have come a long way. How do you see this evolution of IPRS as a body responsible for collecting royalties for the musicians? Thank you very much for this compliment. But in all honesty, I must tell you that I could manage to do it because of two reasons. One, the whole music industry of India was united and together, and they were willing to go to any extent to help me. One. Another, I was fortunate enough that the president had uh, nominated me for Rajya Sabha, so I had uh, tremendous access with every political party, every big leader, minister, the opposition, so on. And I wonder if, could, if this could have happened if I had not gone to Rajya Sabha. So perhaps so many things happened together and the right cards were dealt somehow that uh, we achieved our goal. Uh, yes, it has made a world of a difference and uh, uh, there were many people who were misunderstanding it. I mean, some big producers, some big film stars, uh, some music company, they were thinking that perhaps we are going to take away everything and we'll send to them and they will not get any money and so on. I don't know what was told to them, but they were definitely misinformed. And they tried their best and whatever they could do, to stop this bill, but uh, they failed. And today, they, if they have any objectivity and honesty, they would know that it has not harmed them at all. Not a penny has been taken away from them because of this bill. The fact is that every day the value of their music is only increasing. While we on the other side, IPRS, which is a society of uh, writers and uh, composers, we were making something like uh, all over India. I mean, there is Tamil music, there is Telugu music, there is Kannada music, there is Punjabi music, there is Bengali music, there is Hindi music put together. Our collection of royalty was per annum around 40 45 crore. Now, this we took uh, over this uh, society in 2017. This is 2023, six years. Out of those six years, two years can be given to Corona. From 45 crores, we have reached 565 crores this year. And this is also nothing. If it continues like this, government has been very cooperative. They have understood our problem and they have understood that uh, this is a right and this is in all fairness we should get this royalty. Uh, if we get this kind of cooperation from the government on one hand and if we keep focusing and trying the way we have been doing for the last four or five years, uh, in two, three years, maybe four years, we will cross a thousand crores. Because in spite of the law of the land, there are many sources from where we are still not getting our own. Like, like FM channels? Yes, like FM channels. They say reluctant. Yeah. But obviously, since it's the law of the land, you can't deny there are certain production houses. They are not do, doing, uh, falling in the line. But uh, how far they will reach? It? Because it's the law. You know, do you think radio was the mood maker of the nation for a long time? It used to create some of the finest songs for the public. And today, when over one lakh songs are uploaded on internet every day, to, there's a big need for an official or a credible music chart. Yes. Do you think so? Well, yes, it is interesting that there are so many today, the people have so many sources to uh, access uh, music and popular music. 
but uh, what is unfortunate that is still there is a big segment, a uh, big, big part of the music industry that is not paying a royalty. Even today, although that is the law of the land, that they have to. And uh, we have gone to the court to, uh, against some people, we are negotiating with some people, but uh, that is sad. It's, there are so many people who are not adhering to the law. Who are these people, sir? Which organizations or companies are these? Uh, we are not uh, getting any royalty from uh, yeah. FMs. Some people say 40 lakh. Some people say 15 lakh. But I, I, okay, I'll be happy in 15 lakh. There are 15 lakh sources, although some insist that it, they are not less than 40 lakh. Where music is played in this country, restaurants, hotels, uh, bars, clubs, and so on. And they are supposed to pay us music, the uh, royalty. Out of such a huge number, we get royalty from 15,000. Sir, you know, in the West, even a song producer gets royalty. Why in India we don't value our musicians like West, sir? And that's true. That's very true. That's very true. But you see, please understand, copyright is not a flower. Copyright is a bouquet. So there are different rights within copyright. And this right that we are talking about is called underlying work. Underlying work is composition and the lyric. So we, IPRS is Indian Performing Rights Society. This, this is what it performs, the composition and the okay. words, lyric. And we are asking for those, that royalty. There are many other royalties. There are many other factors, but that's not our department. Our department is restricted, our company or our society is restricted to the music director and the lyricist. Now there is another uh, society uh, that is uh, collecting uh, singles songs. There, are, there is another society that is collecting the sound recording right, one who has recorded the song. Wow. That uh, that right is different. That is that PPL collects that. Okay. Uh, ISRA collects uh, the singular well, right. Maybe and I think uh, IPRS collects strictly for the music composers and the uh, lyricists. Sir, do you think songwriters are like that fine wine who become better with age? I mean, the biggest example uh, is your song from the film Archies. I really like the song Vava Voom. It's really complementing the fabric of the film. Do you think writing gets better with age? No, not necessarily. Actually, I believe that suppose you are uh, you are 50. Although you are not 50, you are much younger than that. So I'm just giving you an example. If you are only 50, then you are one year old that is 50, 50 years old. Actually, ideally, the 10-year-old boy, the 15-year-old boy, the 20, 25-year-old young man, the 30-year-old old man, the 40 year old uh, matured man, should all of them should be alive in you. And they should be at your beck and call. Uh, so I think I am 78. But these uh, songs of uh, Archie's are written by that 15 year old boy who is still alive in me. Songwriters or dialogue writers are a kind of a dominant actor. Yeah. You see, because like an actor is given a role of a farmer or a king or a, a underworld man, so every time he has to put his, himself into that mindset and try to understand the psyche of the character and perform accordingly. The same way a writer, a dialogue writer or a songwriter has to put himself or herself uh, in that uh, mindset that this song is not my song. I am not singing it. I am not writing it. It is written and sung by a boy called Archie who was perhaps 17 or 18 years old. Now, what Archie would say? So that is where, in a way, you become a dominant actor and you perform that. So, sir, so, you know, when you change the image of Indian Hindi film hero, and you introduce the angry young man to Hindi cinema. Yeah. How do you define the leading man of today's cinema? Stories have become real. Even the real issues have become very real. That's true. 
life is not linear and nothing moves in one line. Many things happen together, some desirable, some not so desirable. And it, ha it has happened and it will always happen at any point of time. Uh, so today the film, I mean, when I see OTT, I get so impressed by the level of performance of actors. I mean, they are unbelievably good at it. And not one, many of them. So uh, technology, uh, ca camera work, uh, editing, uh, sound have taken a leap. There is no doubt about it. What happens, you know, with time, we remember good films and we forget bad films. When we talk of that so-called golden era, we remember Mother India and Piyasa and uh, Mughal Azam and Ganga Jamna and Avara and so on. But every year, that time, India was making almost 900 films. Yes. And you remember only nine films yes. after so many years. Because all that kachra is gone away. That is forgotten. And the milestones are remembered. This is happening even today. A lot of films are very, very mediocre. They are below standard. But some of them are exceptionally good. They'll be remembered. And uh, intellectual level and the depth of uh, cinema is increasing by the day. There was a time, say, perhaps 10, 15 years back, then I used to think that, all right, they have uh, uh, achieve certain finesse, certain sophistication, but they have yet to get that uh, depth what Bimal Roy or Guru that could represent. But I can see that we are moving in that direction. And perhaps our young filmmakers may achieve deeper senses and more sensitive and more realistic uh, depiction of uh, life than what was done in the past. So I am very you know, optimistic about the future and yes bad world will also continue and the bad work will be even worse than what was the, the way good is improving bad is also improving in its own direction so that you can't stop you know sir coming back to the songs how do you see the state of hindi film songs today this year is about to finish and the only song that stood out are Besram rang from pathan or maybe Chalya from Jawan. Why Hindi film songs have become so uninspirational? I mean, most of the songs which are coming out, even in the indie space, sounds like uh, clones of each other. That's true. That is sadly, I must accept this fact, but I will not blame the songwriters at all. It is not that they are not talented. Some of them are very talented people. They have a great vocabulary at their disposal. And uh, they are capable of doing work. One can see that much better than what they are doing. The problem is when the marketing departments get hold and control of uh, the creativity, creativity suffers. There are many things which are not in their favor. One, the, the new generation of directors was brought up on Western or maybe continental cinema. They are a bit shy and awkward about the lip sync songs. Yeah. So the song, most of the songs have gone uh, in the background. Or lip sync songs are so-called item songs because you are not supposed to take them seriously. I mean, this is just fun. So the characters are singing. Life tempo has increased, so it is inevitable that the music tempos will also increase. But the tempo has become rather frantic. So there are three things. One, the situation is not conducive, which is given to them. There is no depth in it because a real emotion uh, doesn't need a song. Uh, there they have the dialogue or visual or whatever. But there was a time when people, characters would share their agony or sense of loneliness or hurt or deprivation with the audience through a song. That has gone. Any moment which is deep, any moment which is poignant, doesn't have a song anymore. If at all there is a song, there is a background. So you don't identify with uh, it so much. So situations that are given to the songwriter of today, are not deep enough to write a good song. 
the tempo of the music is not sympathetic to the words and everybody wants a kind of item song item now what is an item song mera naam chinchinchu was also a item song but that was not not the only kind of song in that film there were different kind of songs today there is a desperate desire to turn every song into a chart buster uh, it doesn't work like this so you see the today's songwriter is working under a great handicap he is not challenged as a matter of fact he is asked to reduce his height and make a hit but you know i mean it's a, a kind of a conveyor belt production it's going on same kind of song same kind 90% songs have the same beat that's all so would in depth songs have gone you know, not that they are not capable of writing they are not given their situation sir you know you just mentioned mera naam chinchinchu yeah i remind you of that song and uh, and the lyrics of it it has lyrics like babu ji main cheen se aayi cheeni jaisa dil lai singapur ka yohan mera shang aayi ki angdai you know some can say it was not a great poetry you of course have written a song like that which has some quick quirky lyrics the song is called dard de disco which uh, i have read somewhere that you had some reservations when you were asked to write for that song ye jo hai dard de disco ki kahani kya hai you had some hesitations about writing dard de disco if i'm not wrong you were hesitant to write those lyrics no 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 i'll tell you the story farah khan demand was and then give me a song which has no meaning it should be a meaningless song because the situation is meaningless and within the film uh, it is a film this film was about the film making and about a film is being made within the film and the hero insists that i want a want an item song and while there is no place Uh, for a writer song in that particular story, but he insists and he puts it put down, so a song is prepared. Now she says because it is wrong and it is absurd. I want an absurd song. The song should not have any meaning. So I said, okay. I have written another song for a film called Darmian, where it had one regular mukra and two antras without a single word. There were only sounds because that was their demand. you know to be a, a competent songwriter you don't have to be a great poet you have have to be very very versatile that you should be able to write any kind of thing and usme if if you will have a puritan attitude uh, say uh, attitude uh, of uh, uh, arrogant intellectual that doesn't work because lot of songs need very light hearted attitude lot of songs require uh, appreciating fun uh, fun song so, so you should have all the capability right serious song right meaningful song emotional song uh, song for a street urchin song for a farmer song for a king song for a modern educated man song for uneducated person song for Uh, the youth song for uh, middle aged people they, they are different the vocabulary should change the style should change and uh, that's the challenge to you like uh, people have a very narrow uh, 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 view about your point of view about poetry this is poetry you see i believe that some of the more difficult songs that i have written were for rock on and i am very proud of the, those songs mm-hmm. that year i got every award under the sun for uh, jodha akbar song kehne ko desh ne bahara hai it was a good song that's true but at the same time and these kind of songs have been written many by sahir or majru or uh, shakil bada union song but meri laundry ka ek bill was a deep body novel was a new thing yeah and you needed a lot of correct right that kind of song not only that because what happened that till uh, rock on such kind of songs were written only for comedians 
and using such English words was like making a comedy show. Yeah. Mocking. Yeah, yeah. So, wo jo hai, Mahmood, Ayaz, Johar, Johnny Walker used to sing these kind of songs. Which is sung by the hero, song which is sung by a rock group, and it should sound like written by a rock group. It should not sound like a film song. Yeah. This was the effort, and I think we succeeded in doing that. Very complicated. Now somebody can say, somebody will come, high and dry person, that uh, what is it? Yeah, yeah, Laundry ka ek bill, ye aap poetry likh rahe, ye gana aap paise ke liye likhte hain. Uh, well, that person will be wrong. Do you think you perform brilliantly when you are under pressure? I mean, you have said in the past that how you have written many songs uh, which you, uh, that you took less than 10 minutes to write. The songs were tumko dekha to khayal aya, ek ladki ko dekha to aisa laga, dekha ek khab to ye silsile hoye. Do you perform well under, the, uh, under pressure, sir? No, no, it's not that. You should get the right idea, then writing is not difficult. It's the angle, it is the hook line, uh, where, what is the centrifugal point of the thought? That is important. Once you get that, uh, then you can structure a proper song. Uh, it should be scattered. There should be some kind of togetherness in, from beginning to the end. What a coincidence, sir. All these songs which that I mentioned are about dreams. Do you dream a lot, sir? Like, Dekha ek khab to ye silsile huye, tumko dekha to ye khayal aya. Yeah. You, do you dream a lot, sir? Well, if I would have been in the court, I would have said there is a difference between khab and khayal. Okay. So it can't be said that every time I'm writing about khab, sometimes I write about khayal also, sure. which is different from khab. But what a coincidence, na? All these songs that you have written in under 10 minutes, uh, they have this word, Tumko Dekha, Ek Ladaki Ko Dekha. I had not written this, Tumko Dekha, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, the other song in 10 minutes, it was Tumko uh, Dekha, that was under 10 minutes. But it happens sometimes. I mean, uh, that should not be the criteria, and we should not generalize it every time I write a song within 10 minutes, it's not true. Uh, but uh, that song was written in, within 10 minutes. You know, you have this wide and a marvelous repertoire of your work. It's imp almost impossible to pick one song and point out an easy or the most challenging song. But do you think your song, Ghanan Ghanan, whose lyrics are not easy to follow, they're slightly complex, not just for the listeners, but also for the actors who are performing uh, on the song in Lagan. You see, in that film, most of the songs were a kind of community songs. Uh, uh, so many people were participating in a song and uh, different characters who generally are not the part of the song in uh, Hindi film. So it was a kind of a challenge. And I was really wondering that, uh, uh, are we doing the right thing or wrong thing? I mean, uh, there was only one romantic song that uh, Ori Chori, uh, Beside that, all the songs, all the songs of that film were community songs. The whole community used to sing that. So that was another experience, but it did well. So, you know, song always had that power to bring revolution or can be instrumented in bringing change in the society. Even during the freedom struggle, song played a big role. Words had the power to change people's hearts and influence minds. Would you really like to talk to us about how music can, can empower a message? I think it happens uh, that there are certain ideas, a certain ambition, a certain feeling that an average person in the society is feeling uh, has, but can't define it, can't uh, give a face to it, can't put proper words for that. But it's a feeling. It's some kind of uneasiness in the person but uh, the person is not able to give words to it. Uh, you can't turn it into a thought. There is a difference between feeling and thought. And then comes somebody and who gives words to those feelings which were already there in the mind of uh, so many people. And then they take it, lap it up. Yes, this is it. 
this is what I wanted to say. This is what I feel. Now, thank you for giving me the word for my feeling. So, and when you they get the word, they become more clear about their feeling. But the feeling has to be in the society, in the common man, in the person. And the song will go and give birth to that feeling. And that is why the person will like the song. The other film of yours, which is completing 20 years uh, later this in later this month in November, is your film called Kalona Ho. Yes, yes. Each song in that album is very hummable and has that everlasting quality to it. You, of course, took some days to write the title track of uh, of, of the film. May I please request you, sir, to maybe today jog your memory and give us an insight uh, into the uh, how how was it writing uh, songs to that. You, you know, know that song was that song was a kind of a uh, spine of that script, and uh, obviously it was given that dignity within the script, and it would come at different uh, situation, different uh, dramatic moment. So there was a mukha, which was common, but different antaras or different stanzas. Uh, were different, made, written for particular situations. Um, I'm very thankful to people uh, that they liked it so much. I mean, uh, it was a great, great tune. Great tune. I remember very clearly that uh, we had decided, uh, Karan decided that all of us will go to Pune, stay in, particular, in a particular hotel and work on the music. I leave there one day late, so I went to the suite which was turned into a kind of a recording theatre and um, it had all the musical instruments and everything and Shankar Isan Roy were working there. So I entered and I said, all right, give me the tune, let me write a song. And they played this tune to me. And I said, I will not write the song to this tune now. Because I know that I'll have to stand up on my toes to be able to write words which will come near this tune. It was so good and it affected me so much. So I said, Ye to aap mujhe alag de dije, aap mujhe koi situation dije, likta. This I'll write at my leisure. I was so, so taken away by that tune. It's an exceptional tune, great word. So then, with certain reverence and love and uh, uh, effort, I read that song. So that song was not written in nine minutes, that's for sure. It took time. And then there were different standards for different situations. So I did it at different times. But it took a few days. Uh, but uh, I should thank uh, Karan for using the song so well that it got important. Sometimes what happens is even if you have a good song, but it is not given importance in the film, uh, and uh, it has no situation there, and it has just been shot. So uh, it fails to make that kind of impact that uh, Kalhuna who made. So it is whether the director or the music director, I think uh, they should get equal credit for this success. You know, uh, your father told you while you were growing up that, you know, keep your language accessible to the common man. It should be easy. When you written uh, your film uh, that also completed 40 years earlier this year, the film was called, called Betab, in which you have used a, a dialogue, uh, a line which, in which says, Ghoda Tarkash ho gaya hai. Ghoda Tarkash ho gaya hai. Tarkash ho gaya hai. Tarkash. Tarkash. What is the meaning of that and did, did, did you have any reservations using that? There's a technical word they use. That's not my own. But they use it for that. The trainers of the word they use it. Okay. The Sarkashi is a revolt. The Sarkashi is a bagawat. Breaking the norms and doing whatever you feel like. So, this word, as it is, we have used it. 
और अच्छी बात है इसके देखिए कभी कभी ऐसे वर्ड इस्तेमाल करें तो दूसरों की मुस्कैबली भी थोड़ी बढ़ जाती है अब आपका तो फायदा ही हुआ अभी एक मेरे पोएम में भी इस्तेमाल किया था कुछ दिन पहले कि किसी का हुक्म है दरिया की लहरें जरा ये सरकशी कम कर ले अपनी हद में ठहरे उभरना फिर बिखरना और बिखर कर फिर उभरना गलत है उनका यह हंगामा करना तो उसमें सरकशी वहां इस्तेमाल की थी लेकिन वैसे भी क्या होता है कि हाउर सिंपल लैंग्वेज और ट्रांसपेरेंट लैंग्वेज यू मे यूज समाइम्स सम अनफेमिलियर सिचुएशन और अनफेमिलियर एक्सप्रेशन और अनफेमिलियर इंफॉर्मेशन is being conveyed so for that unfamiliar word becomes inevitable but theek hai ab ye to jahan tak ho sake kariye lekin ab koi aadmi jo nahi jaanta language to nahi jaanta thoda to usse bhi do kadam aana padega na idhar yes yes main mujhe laga tha logo ne bol kya did did people have reservations who were making the film ki ye word shayad logo ko samajh na aaye nahi nahi aisa एक क्या होता है साहिल साहब हु वाज अ ग्रेट सॉन्ग राइटर वंस टोल्ड मी समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग ही सेड के दोनों लाइंस लोगों को समझ में आना जरूरी है इफ दे अंडरस्टैंड वन लाइन दैट इज गुड इनफ फॉर देम एंड दैट इज व्हाई ही हैज यूज्ड अ काइंड ऑफ लैंग्वेज इन द सॉन्ग इन सुपर हिट सॉन्ग न तो कार हवा की तलाश है न तो हम सफर की तलाश है मेरे शौक के खाना खराब को तेरी रह की गाना पसंद है आपको Yes, yes. चौके खाना खराब का क्या मतलब नहीं जानते ना yes. तो वो सही कहते थे कि जरूरी नहीं कि हर लफ्ज के माने लोगों को मालूम हो या हर लाइन समझना अगर दो लाइन में एक लाइन उनकी समझ में आ रहा है दैट इज गुड सर ये जिस जो गाना आपने मेंशन किया दैट वाज ऑफ ये इश्क इश्क है हाँ करेक्ट करेक्ट थिंक शुरू होता था ये ग्यारह मिनट लंबा गाना है डू यू थिंक इस गाने में इतने थीम्स है इसमें कवाली है इसमें पंजाबी है इसमें ब्रिज भाषा का यूज है एंड इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ आवर आवर कंट्री इंडिया आई हैव आल्सो रिटन अ 11 मिनट्स लॉन्ग सॉन्ग डू यू थिंक आज हम ऐसा गाना बना सकते हैं जिसमें इतने थीम्स हो वो स्टार्ट होता है कवाली से देन इट सेस कि पंजाबी में चले यस 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 और फिर उसमें वो बड़ी अवधि वो या जब जब कृष्ण की बंसी बाजी निकरी राधा सच्चे ज्ञान अज्ञान का भेद भुला के लोक लाज को तच के बन बन भूमि जनक दुलारी पहन के प्रेम की माला दर्शन जल की प्यासी मीरा पी गई लहर का प्याला तो ये भी था उसमें yeah. जब तो, जब हाँ ये ग्यारह मिनट का एक गाना मैंने भी लिखा है संदेश से आते हैं वाज आल्सो इलेवन मिनट लॉन्ग सो वाज इट टफ बिकॉज उसमें इतने इमोशन है आप, आप बॉर्डर से घर जाते हैं संधे से आते में Like so many places you go and it 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 it's really doing, fear anything, of song. Okay, doing anything with certain level of competence is tough. Doing anything with without care for the standard or the finish is easy. अच्छी तरह से तो जूते पे पॉलिश करना भी बहुत मुश्किल काम. Right, right. And finally, sir, some of the finest songs that you have written are featured on on Shah Rukh Khan. बीट दर्द डिस्को और 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 कलोना हो नाउ यू अगेन टीमिंग अप विद हिम अगेन फॉर द फिल्म डंकी ओ आई हैव ओनली वन सॉन्ग इन दैट फिल्म ओनली वन सॉन्ग दैट इज द द सॉन्ग द फिल्म एंड्स ऑन दिस सॉन्ग दैट इज द लास्ट सॉन्ग ऑफ द फिल्म एंड इट कंक्लूड्स द थीम ऑफ द स्टोरी एंड दैट इज थैंक टू राजू हिरानी that uh, he insisted that he should have this song and he wanted me to write this particular song so that is uh, i hope you will like the song uh, it is different because it has a different situation you can only write a song a uh, different song for a different situation and pritham has composed it well i have written it first and then he has composed it more often than not we write to the tune by here pritham uh, 
was magnanimous enough to say that sir ye aap gana pehle likhiye mai chun raha hu to bahut acha usne kaha us well on that happy note i want to thank you for your time and in the end may i please request you request you sir to please recite few lines of your favorite poem for your fans चलिए कुछ सुना देता हूँ आपको करोड़ों चेहरे और उनके पीछे करोड़ों चेहरे ये रास्ते हैं कि भीड़ के छत्ते जमीन जिसमों से ढक गई है कदम तो क्या तिल भी धरने की अब जगह नहीं ये देखता हूँ तो सोचता हूँ कि अब जहा हूँ वहीं सिमट कर खड़ा रहू मैं मगर करूँ क्या कि जानता हूँ जो भीड़ पीछे से आ रही है मुझको पैरों तले कुचलने की पीस गई है तो अब जो चलता हूं मैं तो खुद मेरे अपने पैरों में आ रहा है किसी का सीना किसी का बाजू किसी का चेहरा चलू तो औरों पे जुल्म ढाऊ रुकू तो औरों पे जुल्म झेलू जमीर तुझको तो नाद है अपनी मुंसफी पर ओ कॉन्शियस यू आर सो रेन अबाउट योर सेंस ऑफ जस्टिस कॉन्शियस जमीर तुझको तो नाज है अपनी मुंसफी पर जरा सुनो तो क्या आज क्या तेरा फैसला है थैंक यू सो मच एंड बेस्ट ऑफ लक थैंक यू थैंक यू